to be here with you. We've had some blessed times here in this in this church, and uh, it's good to meet Pastor Walker too. I thought from the minute I met him at the front door, the man looks familiar. I come to find out that I've got a CD disc at home with him and his family. Is this the lady that sang that uh, had the bass? No, that's, that's her. Huh? Okay. But I've got, got it at home. <laughs> Amen. But it's a blessing to be here. And uh, I came down this morning. I've had, had you on my heart a good while. But uh, yesterday, I really, the Lord, I believe, was really pressing on my heart to come down just to say thank you to the years that you've spent supporting us and allowing us to be on the field to do what God called us to do. Some of you probably remember the beginning of this thing, this story. Uh, how do you, the challenge is how do you put uh, 40 years into 10 or 15 minutes? Uh, in 1980, uh, my family and I set foot on the island of Majuro, and uh, that was in June of 1980. We spent six years there. We worked in the uh, church there, the Independent Baptist Church on the island of, of uh, Majuro. While we were there, the Lord opened up a request, really, for us to come down to the island of Jalawit, which is about 130 miles south of that one, of Majuro. Majuro is a district center. How many of you, I keep using the term, how many of you know where Majuro is? Not a single hand. If you go to Hawaii, you know where Hawaii is, right? You go about 2,000 more miles west and to the south, seven degrees north of the equator. And that's the island of Majuro, which is the district center of the Marshall Islands. There's about 28, 27 or 28 islands of that are the Mar makes up the Marshall Islands. Well, this island of Majuro, as I say, is a district center, and that's where the church was already planted. Uh, I don't know if any of you remember Dennis Jester or not. Dennis was one of the ones that helped to start that work, and he's the one that's actually the Lord used to get me in there. After I finished college, I uh, asked the Lord to show me where to go, and two days later I got a letter from Dennis saying, come over here and help us in Majuro. So that's where we were, why we were in Majuro, and the island of Chalabit, which is, like I said, 130 miles south of Majuro, those people sent a message to, the, to me at that time, we were the only Baptist missionaries in the Marshall Islands. They sent a message asking us to come down there and to teach them the Bible. That's like putting a stake in front of a hungry dog. We uh, got on the airplane, uh, fin finished up on Sunday night, got on the airplane on Monday, and flew down there. Of course, there's no landing strip. We landed on a dirt road. And sitting to the, off to the side of that dirt road was a pickup truck that had 25 people sitting in the back end of it. We drove seven, seven miles up, and there was a house there that was the, actually a resident of one of the people there. They had moved out of their house across the road, across the sandy road, and put up a lean-to, and they stayed there for a week while we sat down and talked the Word of God. There was no telephone, no electricity. They kept me there till 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning by Coleman Lantern teaching the Word of God. It's the best years I've ever spent as a missionary. Amongst the rats, and we had lots of rats there. But uh, thank the Lord for that. And another missionary followed behind me, and there's now an independent Baptist church on the island of Jalowit. And I praise the Lord for that. Then in, uh, in, two, in 1986, we left the island of Majuro and uh, started to help a man, David Arthurs, to build a radio station. 
in December of uh, 2000, 2005, uh, we put the radio station on the air and I stayed there until it was manned and everything. Went, came back in, did more of my deputation work, and in 1992, we went to the island of Guam. There was a church there in a little storefront that had been started by another missionary, and he had passed away because of a brain tumor. And uh, we got there, there was nine, nine of us in the building, totally, in a little storefront building. And uh, sweet people, I, we just preached the word, pastored the people, loved the people, and the Lord began to add. And by 2002, we were beginning to be so full in the building that we looked like sardines in a can. I mean, it was really tight. We had up to 80 people in that little storefront building. The hardest little building you've ever seen. On one side, it's round like this. On the other side, it's stair-step type thing. But thank the Lord, we had many souls saved there. And uh, by 2002, I mean, 2000 and, yeah, about 2002, I believe it was. Pardon me if I get my dates mis mixed up there. But anyway, I started looking for a place for us to build a building. We had saved up a little money, we think. I had, we think about $82,000 in our building fund. Went looking one day and I saw this big warehouse. I thought, man, if we can just fill that, build that up for a little bit and fix it up, we could have plenty of space for a long time. I checked on the price of it, $300,000. So said, thank you, and I moved to the next space, and it was $200,000. And on down the line till I finally came to this lot that was, uh, they were, had bought it. This uh, health organization had bought it from the local people. They paid $800,000 for two acres of land. That was a little bit too rich for us. So I went to the president of the company and asked him if they were willing to bargain on the price. And he said we were and said, in fact, we had it. Can you imagine owning three $800,000 worth of property and forget you had it? But anyway, we kept bargaining, and by the good grace of God, and I give him all the glory for it, uh, our little church was able to pay $80,000 for that two acres of land. And so we had a place to build now. We didn't, they, that left us with about $2,000 to build a building <laughs> in Guam. That's a joke. We started looking around and asking, and we finally found a, a contractor that used off-island labor. And once in a while, he'd run into spaces of time that he didn't have any work to do. He said, if you all are willing to work with me, I'll work with you. So we started it, and... Uh, Every, we set it up in increments. Every increment that came up, we had the funds to pay. We had folks from the, in the military that would leave their cars behind and tell us to sell it and put it in the building fund. We had some people from the mainland that gave. We had a man in California that I had never seen. He'd never seen me. He read up, read on the in the on the internet, and and one of the characteristics that he read was that we were King James on the Bible, and so he started sending funds in. Every increment that we reached on, in the building, and we did some work ourselves. Every increment we had the funds to pay it off, and so in two thousand. Eight, we moved into a building completed and it was paid for. The day before, not the day, but the week before we were to move in, we decided we needed to pave the parking area. It was red dirt and rocks and everything else, so we had to do something with it. So we decided to uh, go ahead and pave it. 
we had money in the mission fund but didn't have enough in the regular fund, in the building fund. And I told the church, I said, we're not going to touch a dollar of the mission money. This is the Lord's work and the Lord will pay for it. The very next day after we voted on it came a check from off island for $13,000 and we paid the parking lot off. So everything is paid for. There's a building there now. And we had, when I left the building with another missionary in 2011, we had a hundred, about 100 people in the church. And uh, the Lord was still blessing people, souls were being saved. And what a blessing that, that the Lord did. And, and again, this is the Lord's work. Elwood is just a tool in his hand. Not much of one at that, but uh, but uh, thank the Lord he let me serve him. And we saw the church left in his hands. Finally, in uh, I think it was 2000, well, I came home after I turned that work over to a man named Sean Quinlan, who, by the way, was called to preach in the little storefront building. He was a sailor. And he came to the meetings, and I was impressed with his appearance and, and everything. And I asked him to teach a class one morning. And from that, the Lord called him to preach. And he left the island. The Navy sent him off the island for a good while. And one day he called me and asked me if it would be okay for him to come back and work with me. I said, would it? <laughs> uh, so Sean came over and worked with me for a few years, and I turned the work over to him. In uh, 2011, I left the island thinking probably that the Lord was done with me out there. But when we got in to the mainland, the Lord says, no, we got another one to go yet. The southernmost village on the island is the village of Marizzo. We went down there. Uh, the Lord just opened up doors on that. We didn't have a, a place. The village of Marizzo is teetotally Roman Catholic. Even the former mayor told me, said, we never had another religion in this village. Well, I didn't say it, but I was thinking you, you're going to see one now. So we found a place to meet a lady, a rare occasion. A, a lady was trying to rent a, her resident out. And that building, the house that she was in, had a hallway in the house. That the wall was about 12 feet wide. I mean, the room was about 12 feet wide and about 20 feet long. We used that space for the church. And uh, the Lord began to add there. We had some souls saved. Our first meeting, there was two little girls that lived next door. <laughs> that was our attendance, the first meeting. And uh, the Lord began to add there. We had uh, two men that were saved. We had a couple that had been living unmarried together. We married those two and baptized both of them. Uh, we, the Lord just used, just worked in a mighty way there. And uh, before we left the island, before, just before this work, uh, like I said, we thought we were retiring. A lot of people thought we were retiring. The governor called and wanted me to come to his office and gave me a certificate inducting me into the ancient order of the Chamorro. In other words, he's saying, you're an old-time Chamorro. That's the name of the race of people that are there on the island. But uh, the Lord has been mighty good to us. And uh, in 2014, the, my wife began to have some difficulties. And uh, in about 2015, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Well, we had the work going there, but it, it still had to have a missionary there. When I was back in, the, back here in the mainland, um, I was in a missions conference in Taylor, South Carolina, and during the invitation, a man went to the altar and was praying, and somehow it made connection with me. I didn't didn't speak to him or anybody else about it, but after the service, he came to me and started asking questions about Juan. 
and it turned out that the Lord called him to go to Guam and when my wife was reaching the point where we were going to have to leave the field they had one more church to pick up and the pastor told him it would be okay to go without it but before he got to the meeting with the mission board that church had already picked him up and he's there now doing a great work for the Lord he baptized 18 in one summer he started working with the children a lot and then he now is starting to get more adults into the work and so to God be the glory to God be the glory and uh, of course we came home in 2016 we were there for a year with her diagnosed with Alzheimer's so we came home and uh, started my caretaking for my wife and I want to say today that was not a burden for me I counted an honor and a privilege to take care of my sweet wife she after being in for a little while of course she became immobile and uh, she was wheelchair ridden the van that I drove up here this morning was given to me by Tabernacle Baptist Church to take my wife because I was I was loading her in and out of a little Toyota Corolla and carrying her around but we got the van and uh, my wife became immobile and we could re wheel her right in there and take her around wherever we went until she got more advanced with the Alzheimer's and finally we were pretty much shut in and that's why folks tonight that I haven't been here sooner I don't take for granted the support of the local church everything that is done in Guam or wherever the Lord has put us and used us it's done as um, as you, you, as much of your part as it was ours because we could not go without the local churches standing with us and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart every morning before we put a mouth of food in our a mouthful of food in our mouths to eat we thank God for the saints of God that labor and give that we can go and so my wife as she advanced we knew what the end would be and I told my wife while she was bedridden I said I think when you leave that I'm going to go back to the islands and she smiled of course that was not strange to her she was known as Mrs. Smiles and uh, so it advanced on until April the 5th that she went to meet her Lord and I'm looking forward to the blessed day that I can be there with her and give her a big old hug like I used to uh, she, like I say she was known as Mrs. Smiles she was a good wife stayed with me through the islands and the island of Majuro when we were there it was a third world island I mean we didn't have a, any uh, telephone we didn't have any air conditioning we had box fans we had to wash them out every six months or so because they'd be filled up with water uh, the furniture that we had was made by the island men and we had a ocean back behind us we could hear the waves hitting the beach in the night and we had the, the lagoon over in front of us uh, water all around us God had taken an old Virginia tobacco farmer and put me out there in the middle of the ocean and one night one night I began to get claustrophobia and I prayed and asked the Lord to help me I never had any more problem with it but uh, this morning before I left the house I listened to the man preaching the evening service in the church in Majuro Marshall Islands what a blessing to have the electronics that we do nowadays it's a curse sometimes but it sure can be a blessing but uh, the other day I was looking in that area and lo and behold there's a boat full of ladies going across the ocean and I looked out ahead and sure enough that was the island of Arno out in front of that boat these were Marshallese ladies and I actually got to communicate with them on a boat what a difference 
the progress has made. But I thank the Lord for what he has done and is doing. The man that is now pastoring that church says that, I, I didn't remember it myself, he told me about it, that uh, I gave him a gospel track one day and he said he made the statement he'd never go to that church. Today he's a good pastor. He's been trained and pastoring the church and doing a good job. Started a Christian school. They've had over 300 students in that school. God's glory. Amen. Amen. Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, brother.